It's been a long week, right? Are you ready to wind down? Why not? It's time for the Wine Time Fridays podcast with Shelly and Phil. Neither are sommeliers, but both have a deep passion for life, each other, and of course, delicious wine. And now, here to talk about this week over a glass of wine is Shelly and Phil. It's wine time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Wine Time Fridays with Shelly and Phil on this Friday, March 22nd, 2024, episode 205. Shelly, happy Friday. It's wine time <laughs> with our new wine bill. That really caught me off guard last um <laughs> Last week when we, oh, it's a good segue. Uh, thank you to uh, Jonathan Edelman and Dan Sog with Foolhardy Wines. Uh, they are making some really good wines. They are mm-hmm. actually, they just uh, spent a weekend at uh, Taste Washington, um, which, you know, hopefully that went all well and everything. I saw them on social, made a little comment. We know those guys. <laughs> so um, anyway, our reception wine tonight, because given our recent history, we're having a light wine, a light wine night. <laughs> Only two wines that we're going to be tasting through. But Plus, yeah, but this is, this is a, it's a pick pool. And Terre, is that how you pronounce that? Terre? Seems like it. Okay. And it's from France. And um, what says? T-E-R-R-E-T. So. T-E-R-R-E-T. Correct. Uh, we pick love pick, pick pool. And by the way, it's the end of March. So you're nearing it anyway. Great time. The, this week, Shelly, has been in the low 70s, upper 60s. That is freaking awesome. Feels so good. Sunny. Yep. Last Sunday, we... The uh, very warm March for Idaho. Uh, yeah, that's fine with me. Uh, last Sunday, we spent our very first wine time on the deck. So we love that. And now we'll do it every night until September. <laughs> October sometime. <laughs> Maybe. Really? Huh? Anyway, listen, really don't say any word. Don't say a word. Don't listen. Don't say anything. Do you hear that? No. That's the sound. Of dogs of, not barking. Of Lucy not trying to drag her diaper off. Oh, yes. That's worthy of a toast right there. That is. Anyway, there's Cheers a simple to toast. Lucy. Yeah. Pick pool. Very crisp. It's a little bit fizzy so i don't think it's the pig pool that's doing that maybe the Terry? other grape just a very just a very um easy drinking wine um anyway this weekend we're finding ourselves in the woodenville area for all of three hours <coughs> and then <laughs> they'll be back that's fun. Uh, let's it's a long drive for a three hour stay. Three, three hour hours stay. stay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> why don't you hand me your big glass? This is our very first wine. It is a uh, 2022 Airfield Viognier. Do you know why we're having a Viognier, Shelley? The Viognier Day coming up. It is Viognier Day coming and up. It's Washington wine. That is From Washington. That's wine right. Uh, we've had, I think, we've had an Airfield one other time. It wasn't a white though, and uh, yeah. Ooh, Get, like little pear, golden yeah. apple. I'm not getting a whole lot unless I really swirl it around. So maybe it's a little it, too cold. Yeah, it came out of the fridge yeah. about 10 minutes ago. But we need to do a better job of that. And by we, I mean I get some pear. It's like yeah. peach. Maybe white peaches. Yeah. Definitely floral. Uh, to, to just little. Floral peaches? <laughs> well, just white flowers. So just okay. light flowers or something. I don't know. Anyway, to health, wealth, and abundance, gratitude. Romance, gratitude for great weather. Romance mm-hmm. and peace on earth. Ooh. Look at the legs on that. I, don't, I only see spots on the glasses. So. There were spots on the glasses. A little bit. That's very nice. Not at all sweet. What's the alcohol in this? Seems light. Seems like uh thirteen five. No, is it? Yeah. Wow, it's not light. 
It is not light. However, this is bone dry. It is. Which, which is really nice. Actually, compared to that pick pool, it had a little bit of, I'll bet that pick pool is only like 10 and a half. Let's take a look at that. This is up uh, oh, 12% by volume from France. Mm -hmm. Pick pool drier, though. It's very, well, when you taste it after that, it's very acidic. Mm, These yeah. are both nice. Yeah. And pick pool is a grape. It's not a name right. of a winery. Um. This is delicious. This I uh, like the onions for this summer. Yeah. Uh perfect for um a dock, a deck, a boat, backyard barbecue. Mm -hmm. Uh we're going um hopefully this weekend we will be bringing back maybe something from the Pike Place Market if we can find our way there to get some Kumamoto oysters. Yeah. Uh that would be kind of nice. Uh some things that do you have anything that Viognier's pair well with? They pair well with a lot of things. So what? salad, yes. seafood, chicken, lighter chicken. I would think like chicken salad. Soft cheeses like brie and mm -hmm. camembert. Camembert. Mm -hmm. I said it right. Almost. I'm getting so close. <laughs> um, how about like a one a caprese salad. Hmm. Does it say that on your notes? Well, no, my <laughs> notes say basil. I was thinking herbs like basil, and if you've got the 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 cheese, the the um, it's not mozzarella, mozzarella, and the tomatoes, but all that things vinaigrette though. I think it's yeah, a little the, too vinaigrette for yeah, this. Yeah, I think that might um, clash, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it feels like it might. But you could have that mozzarella and the tomato, a little basil with pepper. Without, <laughs> no yeah, and pepper is no uh, dressing whatsoever. That'd be fantastic. Mm, that would be good. It's making me hungry. Um, so, uh, what you'll get typically in a Viognier is some of the flavors of stone fruits like peach, apricot, nectarine, as well as floral nuts, as we have seen in this, such mm -hmm. as honeysuckle and jasmine, uh, often has a medium to full body and a smooth texture. I think what that means is you get quite the mouthfeel on that. Uh, it'll coat, coat your tongue really well. This one is not as, um, not like that as much seemingly. Has this one been on oak? Oh, let's check, shall we? Malolactic fermentation. I open up my iPad and I see social Dana media still marketing. 50% and 50% in French oak barrels, 29% new, 33% two to three year old, and 38% neutral. <laughs> my goodness. 100% 100 estate grown. Yes. And that was for 10 months before blending all the lots together. Right. And they have a food pairing of um, pad thai. Do you know what pad thai is? We had that. I had that at the Mon Mongolian grill type place. Who hot? Who hot? Yeah. Oh, I just recently? Pad thai. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I didn't. I mean, I was there with you, but I didn't know. Uh, I love that. They say you can enjoy this from now until 2030. So uh, that's. Well, it does have smoke. So. Yeah, a, a little bit, right. Um, it also says halibut with orange and mint salsa verde, macadamia chicken with orange ginger sauce and coconut pilaf. I think that would. <laughs> These the, are very specific. Yeah, right? but the, I, I'm laughing because I had asked a question on one of our client pages about their favorite, people's favorite uh, comfort dish. And someone gave me a description <laughs> that was very detailed. I said, Wow, you're so vague. <laughs> uh, also, Gruyere and, or aged Gruyere. Gouda. Gruyere or aged Gouda. Yeah, no one said I had to be able to read. Uh, anyway. I think your teacher did at oh, one point. Maybe, not French. Gruyere is French. Probably. Okay, whew. Um, anyway, this is a um, 
fifteen dollar bottle of wine we picked up at Pilgrim's Market, and uh, Sarah That's there. A really good price. Yeah, go and uh, say hi to Sarah. Let her know you heard this episode and you want to pick up some of this Viognier because Viognier Day is on the twenty sixth. And don't call it Vaginier. No, <laughs> who did that? One of the clients at Ravora. That's One right. Of the <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, <laughs> it's not Vagineer Day. No, <laughs> no, we we get mixed up with Vagineer Day and Pinot Pinot Noir. <laughs> Pinot Noir. I thought you were going somewhere else with that. Oh, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> this is a family show. We only <laughs> slap the explicit tag on. When, when Russell when comes. Russell Man is on or Fast Eddie, Eddie Fast yeah. Eddie can uh, <laughs> is hotter than the effing sun. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> this is really good uh, for fifteen bucks. It is fantastic. It is so. Hmm. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, we're gonna go to our red wine. Oh yeah. Hello and welcome back to One Time Fridays. We are on episode 205 and we're talking about two wines from Washington State because it's the first of two months of Washington Wine Months. Yeah, we I don't know why they get two months. We get five weeks in this Washington oh, Wine so Months too. Five weeks and another additional month. Yeah, so, August is also Washington Wine Month. So this little dog of ours uh, apparently is again. not shy in front of a camera anymore because last week, for those of you who saw on YouTube, she made her now she wants up semi wine time Friday's appearance, but she's wearing no diaper. Here she is again. Yeah, there's Lucy. Lucy making another appearance. Um, so I want to, before we move on to that red, talk about the CDA Gourmet Wine Word of the Week. It's flights. Lights. Now, flights have come more into play uh, at tasting rooms where you'll uh, order a flight. They'll have different flights and there are X amount of uh, dollars for, you know, three to five um, pours of, you know, an ounce and a half, two ounces, something like that. Mm -hmm. It's a really good way of sampling some wines and then saying, ah, this is fantastic. I would take a glass of this. So uh, those are flights, but they came from long ago, okay? Uh, you can well, have two different kinds of flights. Well, that's true. You can have a vertical flight. Which is, I think, where they where that word originated from, and then the tasting rooms kind of adopted that a little bit. But uh, when, when, wine, when wine collectors assemble to make a comparative analysis of several wines or types of wines from the same producer region, or grapes from different vintages, the wines aren't served in groups or herds, but in flights. Herds? Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Uh, a oh, herd of wine. Well, you have a gaggle of goo geese. And yeah, but this is not animals. It's that's a, true. It's wine. Well, you have a herd of elk. Please stop. Don't lick the table. Jeez. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That was Lucy, not us, licking the table. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so flights. Um, highly recommend when you go uh, do some wine tasting, if that's offered because you're not sure where to go, what, what to try, get a flight. Mm -hmm. uh, what Shelly and I do. You can get flights of wine, flights of beer, flights of coffee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably flights of tea. Probably. I would like a flight of ice cream. <laughs> I bet you would. Yeah, we're or um, pie. <laughs> yeah, we are having flights of pie right mm -hmm. now. Um, yeah, leftover from pie day. Leftover from pie day because I bought too many. <laughs> Only ten, but there are many pies. <laughs> there are many pies. Um, what was I going to say about? Oh, what Shelly and I do is when we go to a tasting room and we'll get a flight and we'll actually share the flight because we really just or we'll get two flights differently, mm -hmm. different flights, and then. Share so it's kind of double the bang for the buck. So anyway, um, let's see. I have in my little cubby here. Shall I? Do you see the little cubby? Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool, huh? You gonna say it's cute? I'm not gonna say that because <laughs> I'm worried about that cubby falling over. Really? Where's it gonna go? 
the wine logo. It's a little unsteady looking. Oh, I don't think so. Maybe. Um, anyway, thank you to CDA Gourmet for the wine word of the week. And I've toyed with putting the wine word of the week on a page on our website. Oh, you should. So you go back and, and look back on them. You know, I have nothing really to do. <laughs> no, nothing. We're okay. Just bored out of our minds. This was a last second uh, choice. We haven't had this for a while. We haven't had it for a while. I don't believe we've ever featured Townsend. Townsend? No, I don't think so. All right. This is Townsend T3 from Columbia Valley at the Blend. Yeah. What is this one a blend of? I can tell you. It's a blend of 45% Cabernet Sauvignon, 35% Merlot, and 17% Cabernet Franc. Now, I'm going to show this to those folks watching on YouTube. There's the T3. I could not, for the life of me, find a vintage on the bottle. I talked to Cheryl Lynn because we got this at Fred Meyer. And um, she, she said, wow. I love this wine. She she loves the T3. And so and she can't keep it on the shelf. It's uh -huh. about 17 bucks. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good for a red wine. Yep. Uh, but I asked if this was a uh, non-vintage and she she either. Uh, hmm. This seems like something new then. You mean because it, didn't they used to have this vintaged? I thought so. Well, I I do not see a vintage on this anywhere, um, so that might be new. Anyway, uh, hashtag cheersing. Cheersing. What are you doing, Lucy? You know, one of our on again off again traditions mm, in the fall is to go to green bluff and we'll uh it's a, it's like a nice big old circle <laughs> she's so weird and uh we end up at townsend mm -hmm, we do um it used to be jill Ryder was the tasting room manager there she's no longer there but it was nice to give her a shout out mm -hmm. uh the the wines are fantastic they ended up buying um What's the winery right off the freeway when you drive? I can't think of it. Me either. Not Arborcrest. Well, Arborcrest is up there. The yeah. One, what up right off the freeway? Was it owned by a, an attorney? No. Not that one. Okay. Yeah, you're talking about Nautilus Cellars. Mm -hmm. No, I can't think of it. Probably pull all that out. But mm -hmm. um, anyway, uh, Townsend's been around for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, this particular. Don't they have a red table wine? And yes, a white they table do. Wine? And a purple table wine. Really? Have yeah, they have purple. a purple table. Uh, so, and their labels are cute because they have tables. Yeah. Like a side table. Why in the them. world did uh, nobody else thought of that? I think it's a fantastic thing. Nobody uh, thought it was good. <laughs> well, it's just interesting. Yeah, let me see what that turbo, purple table wine is because uh, we were actually talking about that uh today sherilyn and i and um i she said they had a purple i'm what is that one she didn't know so we're does it have malbec in it because malbec is very dark maybe hmm. uh i'm not sure here we go um do 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 purple table Ooh, 14 dollars let's see this, everyone's on the edge of their seat it doesn't give us any description. <laughs> this one was 17. Uh, this is about 17 bucks. Yep. It actually says 20 on their website, but it's uh, 17 at Fred it's, Meyer. It's pleasant. It'll probably open up a little more and be a little better in a while. It's still young. It is. It's okay. kind of got a, 
off ta- a, lot, a little off taste. Are you getting that? Maybe. That's why I'm hoping it's going to open up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, interesting. I, I think I would rate that pleasant. Mm-hmm. I would rate the v- Viognier. What would you rate the Viognier? Um, practically perfect. Yeah, I think I'm right with you on that. Practically perfect. Uh, happy spring. <laughs> happy spring, yes. Spring is in the air. Spring it's has so spring. nice. Uh, 26th is International Viognier Day. Uh, some of the different wines that we've enjoyed uh, this week. We had two from Elsom Cellars. We had the Elsom oh, yeah. Cellars Logan and we had their Malbec, both spectacular. That Malbec was so dark. And it was just so good. Um, we, you know, we're trying to do better, full disclosure, transparency, mm-hmm. not necessarily drink as much wine at night. So it was like a little of that, a little of this. And when we look at the bottle of the Malbec and it's gone, we're like, crap. Not again. <laughs> not again. <laughs> That's a sign of a really good wine. Um, we have the Clo Argentine Reserve, Clo to Argentine Reserve Malbec, uh, Revora Syrah, Lindsay Creek Winemakers Red. That was fantastic. That was very good. Yes. And the Dominic Hintal Terra Bianca. And of course, this uh, Florent Sac Le Arti Le Le De Ta Picultere. You're laughing at my pronunciation. Maybe. Maybe I, I wouldn't know, have maybe. done much better. Even though I had like six years. Of <laughs> Minus my six years, I didn't have. <laughs> um, do you want to say what's coming up? What is coming up? Yeah, you don't need to know, Luce. Um, March 27th, World Marcelon Day. In April, we have 14th International Tanat Day. We love Tanat. 17th Malbec World Day. We also love that. <laughs> yeah. Dustin Lewis and the Bogle Family Wine Collection coming on. Ron Charman with Fly With Wine. Yay. And MJ Towler, a.k.a. the Black Wine Guy, among others. Yep, among others. <clears throat> what I didn't put on this list was that Juggernaut Pinot Noir, which I'm not sure if we'll have the Pinot Noir from Juggernaut with Dustin, with Bogle Family Wine Collection. But we will be tasting through some Bogle wines, some Juggernaut, and they've got this one fantastic bottle. It's super thin aluminum. The wine inside is is you know almost like a bag. It's not a bag, but it's coated on the inside, so you're not know. having the wine contact with the aluminum. No, we didn't want that. But you, I mean, so there's this trend of people getting pissed off at the weight of wine bottles. In a sense, that if, a, if it's a heavier wine bottle, it's got the perceived value of mm-hmm. of a better quality wine, right? And yeah, and. and- Larger punt, a, a, a deeper punt, yeah. So we'll see about all of that. Shelly, do you have anything left? It seems like this one zipped right on by. Um, I do not have anything left. Okay, then. Well, uh, thanks to today's sponsors, J Book Walter Wines and Cordelang Fresh. And remember, with a little bit of knowledge, wine becomes a lot less overwhelming. Thank you for joining us. Go out and enjoy the sun. Get ready for springtime. We are here. Thank freaking goodness. And we'll see you next week. Uh, oh, yes, next week with uh, Lopez Island Wines. Oh, yeah. Little Madeline Angevine and Ziggy Bay. All that's right. That's why we need the oysters. That's why we need the oysters. We'll see you next week. Thank you for spending part of your day to wind down with Shelly and Phil. Remember, you can listen to any episode of the Wine Time Fridays podcast by visiting winetimefridays.com or wherever you get your podcasts. And join us on our Wine Time Fridays Facebook page, Instagram, or on Twitter, which is at Vintage Tweets, for daily conversation. Until next week, here's our toast to you. To health, wealth, abundance, gratitude, peace on earth, and of course, romance.